y a si longtemps déjà. Hello, and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I'm also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I am coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my partner, our two daughters, and our five cats. So happy 2021, everyone. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed a lovely end to 2020 and um, a fresh new start in 2021. So for those who are new, um, a big warm welcome, first of all, and a big welcome back to all returning viewers. Uh, this is primarily a knitting um, podcast. However, I do sometimes get into uh, some of the other crafts I'm delving into at the time, such as cross stitch and crochet. So um, yeah, maybe I'll just start off with what I am wearing. So this is the Comfort Fade Cardigan. Um, sorry, Comfort Fade Cardi, I think it's the official name. It's an Andrea Mowry pattern, uh, Drea Renee Knits. I knit this up, I think it was in 2017. It's the very first garment, uh, or adult sized garment, I should say, that I ever completed. Um, yeah, and if you'd like to find out more about it, you can certainly um, click on the link down below to my project page. Um, everything that I speak about will be found in the down bar down below. So, oh, I am also wearing, I guess this brings me into my first finished object. I'm also wearing a pair of slippers. So uh, I don't know how best to show you. I'll take one off. Uh, yeah, so these are the Celtic Dancer slippers. It's a free pattern on, uh, on Ravelry. It's by Drops Designs. And I knit mine up out of Knit Picks muse which is like a it's a hundred percent merino so i don't know how well this is gonna hold up um yeah i think it's like a it's either a bulky or chunky weight no it's air and weight sorry um yeah so these were a super fast knit i think i knit them up in a day or two um and they were kind of <laughs> A necessity i think i spoke a few times in the past about how cold it is down here in the basement um and this is where i this is i'm actually filming in my office space as well as it doubles as my craft room too so um, i spend most of my time during the day down here during the week uh, working from home so i needed something to keep my feet warm and these are definitely doing the trick sorry they've been well worn <laughs> this past week um yeah but I definitely highly recommend the pattern. It, like I said, it was very quick. I don't know if you can tell, I used a, obviously a variegated yarn, so it's hard to see, but there's a cable down the center. And then along each side, there's, there's a cable as well. And then the bottom is seed stitch, which is kind of brilliant because it actually provides um, not only like a cushioning to the slipper, but it also um, prevents slipping. Like I haven't, I know some people will say like slippers are very slippery when they're wearing them like on hardwood floors or whatever. I haven't, I haven't had that issue with this. So I haven't had to put any of those little, uh, I don't know, puffy paint or whatever on the bottom to provide grip. So yeah, they've been working out really well. So again, these are the Celtic Dancer Slippers um, by Drops Designs on Ravelry. So that's my first finished object. I do have a second finished object. Um, so I managed to <laughs> managed to get my partner's Christmas socks uh, cast off before Christmas. So these are his Christmas socks. He's been wearing them, so they're a little bit um, a little grumpy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I knit these up out of Timber Yarns. Um, it's a self striping yarn and the colorway for the stripes is called ho 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 and then i did the just the heels out of um i think the colorway is just called dark green also by timber yarns so this was just a vanilla sock i cast on 72 stitches i did i think eight rounds or so of twisted rib um is it twisted rib i lie two by two rib <laughs> and um i can't even remember i think i did a rounded toe anyways links to all of my project pages will be found down below my memory is like a sieve sorry guys uh yeah so he's really loving these they fit him well um yeah 
So that's my second finished object. And third finished object. Okay, I don't know if you can actually call it finished. It's not technically 100% complete. Um, but on Christmas Eve, with the help of my mom, I was able to finally steak my woodlark shawl. Okay, yeah, this, so the ends have not been woven in either. And um, I still have to, did I already say this? I have to hide the steak stitches. So, but it is now in a shawl shape. And that was my first ever steaking and uh it went it went super smoothly so i i watched a video i'll leave a link down below because the video the name of the video is escaping me now but it was super helpful it showed me how to do the like a crocheted i don't know if you can see crocheted reinforcement stitch um on either side of the steak <laughs> And I just did, it recommended a single chain crochet um, just because the yarn is so thin. And I guess that's so it doesn't show up as well. Um, but you could do like a double, a double crochet. Oh, I lie. I did a slip stitch was what I meant to say. You could do a single crochet. So I did a slip stitch all the way down. And then, um, yeah, cut it open. And so far it looks like the stick is holding. So. <laughs> So that's good. I should really get it sewn under so that um, I don't have to worry about it coming out. But I think I used a non-superwash yarn. Um, this is yarn by Smallbird Workshop, which is a, um, a Canadian yarn dyer, indie yarn diner. And the colorways are ink and natural. And it was a uh, 7525 BFL Scotland mix and I really enjoyed knitting with it it was a, a really lovely a lovely yarn to knit with it was my first time using something other than merino so that was exciting and uh, what else can I say so the, the pattern itself um, I will admit was quite fiddly in the beginning especially I think I did seven attempts at casting on now some of those some of those were probably my own errors, but it, it just, it was really fiddly to start off. Um, and I, I did struggle with the instructions when we got to, um, I can't remember which color work piece it was. I think it might've been the very first, like other than the bobbles, the actual color work here. I struggled to understand uh, Larka's instructions. I'm sorry, this is, <laughs> I didn't even mention. So this is a pattern um, by Fiber Tales or Larka. So, yeah, but once I once I had some assistance from Naomi of the uh, Yarn Curator podcast, um, yeah, then it kind of made sense to me. And uh, I was able to pass that knowledge on to a few other people who are making this shawl who are struggling with the color work um, and, and the instructions therein. So I did put notes on my project page to kind of try and clarify um, how to interpret that first color work piece because it, it uh, the pattern continues those directions throughout so every time there's color work so you really need to understand what she's trying to say at the very beginning um, so you don't don't struggle I guess so yeah if you want to if you're making this shawl or um, are interested in making it the uh, the all of the instructions that I used um, are are on my project page so yeah that's kind of a finished object I consider it finished because really, I mean, do you consider an object that you haven't woven in the ends finished? That's how I look at this. <laughs> same, kind of same idea. Okay, so moving on to works in progress. I managed to pick up and work, do some work on my swallowtail sweater, which is a pattern by Jamie Hoffman. This is the sweater here. Uh, it features this beautiful butterfly in the center. So I was able to get the body done and I did, even did the color work and the ribbing. Um, you will note that I still have it on a cable 
And the reason for that is because um, I'm now moving on to the sleeves and I have a very limited amount of, okay, I'll show you here. This color here, the, it's called lichen, the colorway. Um, so what I've done is I, I kind of did a short rib at the bottom. I mean, it could work and it, the pattern doesn't call for much more of of the ribbing than than what I've done but um, in the event that I have some leftover of this color after I'm done the sleeves I want to make sure I had enough for the sleeves I will come back and um, and add on a, a few more rounds or I'll basically use up the rest of the color so yeah so um, this is being knit out of Georgian Bay Fiber Co yarn which is a local indie uh, yarn dyer here in Sudbury the yarn is the Bayfield Fingering, and um, it's a 100% BFL yarn. A dream, a dream to knit with. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, so much so that I think I mentioned I actually ordered more. <laughs> um, yeah, so the colorways are, as I mentioned, lichen for the yellow. The natural color is called uh, Vintage Lace. This dark brown is wrought iron. And then the body on the body, you can see this rusty color. This is called Noble Rust. And I just, I just adore this. It's been such a fun knit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to put some more effort in and, and get the sleeves done so I can finish the sweater and actually wear it. Maybe I'll get a chance to wear it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we have, you know, a few more months of winter to go. So here in Sudbury, so. I should get a chance to wear it if I can finish it. So that's that's one work in progress. And I only have one other active work in progress, which is kind of shocking for me because usually I have quite a few things on the needles. Um, but I've I don't know I felt this need to to really focus on finishing things and um, I'll, I'll speak about it a little bit later after after uh, all the crafting content um, but yeah there there is some intention behind what I'm doing so housed in this gorgeous hand dyed naturally dyed bag by natural you which again is a, another um, local local yarn dyer um, they do only natural naturally dyeing and they're located in Bracebridge Ontario um, so housed in this bag is my stripey sock then I'm calling this my striped vanilla sock so um, on a previous podcast I showed um, a mini skein kit that I had bought from Natural U. Um, and the, I guess the, the individual yarns don't have colorways, but all together as a set, they are called fresh cut grass, I believe. Um, so I am using those to create um, a stripey sock. So I am also supplementing because they were so I had 100 grams, yeah, five 20 gram minis um, to ensure that I was going to have enough um, yarn. I'm supplementing the heels, toes, and cuffs with some Canon hand-dyed uh, Bruce Yak Merino yarn that I had in my stash. And they were just little five gram minis, which, which are perfect. So um, I used uh, the Bruce Yak for the cuff. I just did a one by one twisted rib. Uh, in this dark brown color and then started striping the different minis from natural U. there is a speckle in here as well and and the heel is done in a different brown a darker brown by canon hand dyes and then once i get to the toe i'm going to use the darkest brown i have from canon hand dyes to to finish it off and i'm praying that i calculated correctly so i've done 12 rounds of each color in the stripes Ex so which is great <laughs> except for when you get to the part where um after the af when you're decreasing for the gusset 
So once you've picked up and um, so these, the speckled row basically is using up more yarn than any of the other stripes. So I'm hoping that I calculated correctly and I'll have enough of the speckle to do the other sock, which yeah, hopefully it works on. But I'm, I'm loving the way that it's knitting up and look how I didn't do this intentionally, but I had bought a like one of their hand dyed bags and the, the mini skein set and they just, they look so beautifully together. They match so perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, so this has been a really fun knit. It's been uh, super entertaining because I, I love, I don't know, there's something about striping and switching to the next color that just makes things seem like it goes so much faster. So I only cast this sock on, well, less than a week ago, I think, maybe a week. So yeah, and I'm almost done it. So I might actually have a pair of socks done in, in two weeks if I cast on right away and keep going. So yeah, that is it for all of my works in progress. I have lots of plans. Um, I should mention that we do, we also have a knit along happening um, in, in the Ravelry group for this podcast. So the, knit, the Ravelry group is called the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast group. Um, and anyone is welcome to join. So the knit along is called the Around the World Make Along 2021. And um, essentially the premise of it is to just use or make something um, right now to make something using yarn or a pattern from your country. So it's a year long knit along and every four months we're going to switch locations. So this location for this trimester is your country. So um, yeah, we've all already had a couple people um, casting on. Um, there's some people who are planning um, the, and yeah, you can find more details in the Ravelry group. Um, so I have myself have not cast on yet because I am waiting for my yarn to arrive. Um, so as I mentioned previously, I'm planning to make the soiree sweater by Emily Foden from her Knits About Winter book. And um, I was going to try and get my hands on some of her yarn, but I I'm not sure that she's actually doing the update that I thought she was. And if she is, I can't find the newsletter that speaks to when it is. I didn't want to put it off too long because it is a, it's a pretty big sweater. Like it's a boxy, um, a boxy pullover. So I, um, so I'm going to use some yarn that I have in my stash from Lichen and Lace. I'm going to use, um, for those of you who are longer longer term viewers you may have seen I was working on a Svelga sweater out of lichen and lace beach glass colorway um, and I've since torn that out so I'm going to use that yarn um, paired with some uh, matching lichen and lace beach glass mohair um, to make the soiree so I'm just waiting for that mohair to arrive it's I think it's slated to arrive in the next week or so um, and then I will be casting on and knitting furiously because um, knitting a sweater for myself, <laughs> knitting a sweater in four months isn't a lot of time. Um, but yeah, so anyone's welcome to join in. Uh, it doesn't have to be a sweater. It can be a, it can be an accessory. It can be anything. And it doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be knitting either. It could be crochet or some other craft. Um, yeah. So feel free to join. So, um, what else? So acquisitions, I'll move into some acquisitions. Um, I'll start with maybe the books because, um, before my mom left, so she stayed with us, she was with us for three weeks, which was lovely having her here. Um, we, yeah, we spent a lot of time together. It was really nice. And we went to our local used bookstore before we're currently in lockdown. So before lockdown occurred, um, we got out to the used bookstore and, we found some, well, some exciting to me books. Um, yeah, so I got, I ended up getting three books on embroidery, which is something that I really want to try this year. Um, so this one is embroidery on paper, which I thought was really neat. And then these two are Japanese. So there's a Japanese embroidery. I thought those pillows were so pretty uh, and this one's more of a it's a Japanese kind of applique so fabric embroidering on fabric which I thought was really cool too so yeah three exciting new books to me 
And of course, the most exciting find, I think, was this book by Alice Starmore. And it's called uh, Book of Fair Isle Knitting. So it's a whole series of different patterns um, for Fair Isle. So just give you an example. It's really lovely to look at. And Alice Starmer is very well known for her lovely um, color work patterns. So while I was looking through, through the book, I came across this sweater for a child, but I just loved the pattern on it. Now I'm not gonna make this sweater for my daughter or stepdaughter, but I was thinking it would make an absolutely beautiful Christmas stocking. So I got out my graph paper <laughs> and I started designing a Christmas stocking. So I think, I think I would like to, okay, I'm not gonna kid myself. I will not be able to finish four Christmas stockings this year. I know I won't. Um, but if I could get even one done with the intent of eventually getting all four done, <laughs> that would be great. So yeah, I'm thinking of doing, um, you incorporating Alice Starmore's um, child's panel Gansey into a, a Christmas stocking. And then there's a whole bunch of other um, patterns in here. So they're not all colored, they're just, oops, sorry, just move that. But they just give you um, some pattern ideas that you can use. And they tell you, um, well, those ones are Norwegian star patterns, but like there's different um, motifs, I guess. And they tell you how many rows they are and stuff like that. So you can just essentially swap out. So I think that's what I'm going to do is, is start with that first, um, that first one and then just swap out the motif with another, I think it was, yeah, 29 pattern, stitch pattern. So all of the, um, the stockings will be different, um, but I won't have to, it'll make things easier for me, but I'm just swapping out a pattern that's the same size instead of trying to reconfigure every time I make a new stocking. So yeah, that's the plan. So I was pretty excited for that. You never know what you're gonna find at used bookstores, eh? They're great. Okay, so moving on to some yarny acquisitions. I was fortunate enough to win a giveaway, which is my very first time ever winning. I don't, I don't often enter giveaways, I'll be honest. Um, I'm pretty selective in, in what I enter. Um, yeah, I try to make sure it's something that I really, really want. Um, and I was so fortunate to win these two gorgeous skeins. So it's the, okay, let's see. Firstly, it's by Felicity Yarn Studio, and you may know her as um, Zoe. She has her own knitting podcast called the Felicity, Felicity Yarn Studio Podcast, which I religiously watch. I'm sure I've mentioned her several times um, on this podcast. So yeah, look how gorgeous this little speckled yarn is. It's so pretty. So it's like a light blush pink with speckles. Um, it's a sock yarn, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And the colorway is called Neapolitan. It's just so pretty. And then there's a matching mohair. Oh, look at, you can really see the Neapolitan in this. Look at that. It does scream like ice cream, doesn't it? Oh, so pretty also called Neapolitan, and it is 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. And it's so beautiful and soft. And she even threw in a gorgeous stitch marker. Hopefully you can see that. That matches. So nice. So yeah, I was so excited to hear that I won a giveaway um, and it was something for something so beautiful. So thanks again, Zoe, if you're watching. <laughs> I don't have plans for this yet. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out. I'm thinking probably it'll end up being either a hat or a cowl. 
Um, but I have to find the right pattern for it. So that's one acquisition. And then my mom, who was making the Giord sweater, which if you're not familiar, you can um, have a look at my last podcast and she shows um, her nearly finished sweater. She just had to finish sewing the pieces together pretty much. So she was making that out of Latlopi and I was fortunate enough to get her leftovers. <laughs> so I have, I think it was 11 colors of Let Lopi um, leftover. She had bought two sweaters quantity at the time when she was making it 30 years ago. Um, yeah, so I was gifted a whole bunch of Let Lopi, which I'm so excited to put to use. Again, still need to find the right pattern for that one. Um, or patterns. I think I could probably get a few things out of that. And then uh, my mom coordinated with her friend Barb. Hi Barb and thank you if you're watching. Um, and got me some more Lopi in this lovely peachy brown colorway. Uh, there's definitely a sweaters quantity here, so that's great. And um, I think my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, mom, but Barb picked this up when she was on a trip to Iceland. So it's Icelandic yarn from Iceland, which is super exciting. So yeah, I have to find a use for that one as well. So many things, so many things. So yeah, so that that's it for all the yarny making content today. Um, but I did want to kind of talk about the new year and perhaps some of my intentions for this year. I don't know, do you guys make New Year's resolutions? Um, I don't typically make New Year's resolutions. I, I did in the past, um, but I found, I found I was a little hard on myself when I couldn't stick to them. So... I've learned over the years to be a little bit kinder to myself and to not hold myself to um, any specific resolution, I guess. So instead, I just kind of make plans. So for 2021, um, I have a few things that I'm planning. So firstly, I'm planning on being a little more intentional with my makes, um, really being thoughtful in what I make, the um, yarn choices that I use for them. Um, and just having, just putting a lot of intention behind it. So instead of, I've had, <laughs> I've had, um, tendencies in the past to just cast on something shiny and new and, um, and then, you know, finish it eventually or grow bored of it and put it in a, in hibernation for quite some time and then you know finish it because I felt obligated to finish it because I'd already started it but then I don't actually use it or wear it which is I just I feel like that that's just not the direction I want to move in anymore <laughs> I just I want to make an intentional wardrobe or you know when I make things for other people really considering you know the the person's uh, aesthetic and if they're actually going to like what I make for them um, yeah, so just putting a little more intention behind my makes. I think that's, that's kind of the goal. Um, so my other goal is to, uh, or plan, is to try some different techniques. So branching out of, you know, um, standard knitting techniques or even trying new crafts. So hence the embroidery books. I'd really like to try embroidery. I do cross stitch. I have cross stitched quite a bit in the past, um, but embroidery is something new to me and uh, so is applique. So I think those are two things I'd really like to try this year. Yeah, and so another thing that I'd like to do is really utilize different uh, fibers. Maybe not fibers, so they'll all be wool, but different breeds of sheep um, and try and expand on my... Uh, my knowledge of different uh, sheep breeds and usage, usages of their, uh, their fibers. So that's something else I'd like to look forward to. Um, yeah, so I think those are kind of like my three main making related plans for the, uh, for the new year. Um, and I was watching, I was watching Judy of the, um, the Autumn Acorn podcast and if you have never watched her podcast I highly recommend she's she's such a lovely woman so kind-hearted and just 
just, I don't know, she's very thought provoking. Um, and um, there's something very genuine and sweet about her. <laughs> and I really enjoy watching her podcast. So I was watching it the other day and she was talking about um, gratitude and looking back on 2020 and instead of focusing on some of the or some many of the negative things that occurred in 2020 and um, really trying to be grateful for the good that came out of 2020. So that's something uh, that's been in the back of my mind as well. And I've been mulling over, um, you know, some of the things that I've been grateful for, um, despite the craziness of 2020. So I thought I would, um, you know, speak about maybe three of those things that I'm grateful for and if you want to leave a comment down below and let me know what you're grateful for um, that would be wonderful because I I would love to know um, you know what positives came out of 2020 I think it's a great a great thing to do to focus on the positives as opposed to the negatives so um, okay so firstly I'm very grateful for starting this podcast um, in 2020 I did start it before the pandemic not much before it but February, I think it was. Yeah. February 14th or 15th or something. Um, yes, I'm so grateful for starting it. Um, it, it, it was so awkward at the beginning and I still have awkward moments. I'm an introvert through and through. Um, so it doesn't come naturally to me, um, speaking in public and things like this, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a godsend. It's really helped me connect with so many wonderful makers, um, in our, in our community. And I just, I'm so grateful for it and, and for you guys. So that's the first thing, um, that I'm grateful for. Secondly, uh, I'm very grateful for the amount of time I was able to spend with family quality time. I think, I feel like I spent more time with my family than I have, have in a really long time. So that, that was really great. Uh, and finally, I'm very grateful for having gotten engaged. Um, I know 2020 was a doozy of a year, but, um, you know, I just, I'm looking forward to the future with my, my soon to be husband and, um, and our family. So yeah, those are three things that I'm very grateful for, for from 2020. So I think, I think that's it for today. I will leave it with that. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful um, next couple of weeks and I'll, I'll talk to you in two weeks. Bye. Mm -hmm.